Hey everybody, since the hurricane a couple of weeks ago, there's been a lot of interest lately in ham radio, radio communication, go bags, and other emergency communication stuff. Uh, I've been ham for over 13 years now, and uh, I'd like to kind of walk you through uh, some things that I have built. There's a lot of different options here, so I'm gonna show you two different radios and two different kind of build configurations depending upon what your situation is and what you're looking for. I've got kind of a cheap, simple option and then something with uh, some greater capabilities. So I'm gonna step you through them and you can decide what works for you. I'm not gonna talk about licenses, not a sad ham, that's up to you. Let's just talk about gear, all right? Let's go. Okay, so we have the Pelican case knockoff from Harbor Freight, which is almost always on sale. Uh, I dig it, great size, really tough, really great price. And then this is actually a first aid kit. This came from home uh, from Amazon, and I like the way that it lays out. So let's open it up and go through it. So this is a multi-fold, which I really like. So that way when you open it up, if it's hanging on a backpack or on a belt, all your stuff doesn't fall out. So down here, I've got the programming cables, some charge cables, and other little knickknacks. I got a USB charger, we'll talk about the reading in a second. So these are the little knickknacks that you're not gonna use all that often, but uh, it's nice to kind of keep them on hand. Now up top, we've got the radios. This is the Redivis A1. I've made a couple other videos on this. I think that this is the best radio that you can buy under $55. Quick high points. 1,000 channels instead of 127 includes weather band. You've got USB charging, USB-C charging here on the side, wideband, UHF, VHF. It has GPS built into it, so you can send your coordinates back and forth between two radios, digital compass, and best part, it's waterproof. Can your Baofeng do that? Okay, regardless of what radio you end up picking, we've got a, a nice little place here for the antennas. And like I said, they do clip onto this little snip, uh, onto a little strap right there so they don't fall out. So there's the radios off to the side. Now let's get into some of the weird parts here in the back. First is a 15,000 milliamp USB battery. This is a super, super slim one. Everybody should own several of these. So the Redivis A1s have a 2,000 milliamp battery, which is bigger than the standard bow phone. Recharges by USB-C, which means I can recharge it, both of those radios, several times with this. These are un under 20 bucks. This is a simple thing to drop in to recharge those things. Now, everybody loves the Nagoya 771 antenna. Um, I have kind of mixed feelings on it. That's uh, out of the scope of this but something I absolutely recommend is a roll-up J-pole. So this is a wire antenna with another 10 feet of wire on it. I put this little loop on the top. This came from eBay, and this thing is fantastic. My personal record with a handheld radio is over 40 miles using this antenna up in a tree. Note, you need an SMA to BNC adapter, which will go on your radio and turn it into a BNC. You should have a couple of these. And it lets you adapt your radio to sort of standard antennas. Now, having said that, something that you really need along with this is a way to get it up in a tree. This is accessory cord. Um, it's similar to 325 cord, but it's actually thinner and it's slick. This is about 20 feet with a bunch of fish weights on it. And I, use, and I always get it in green or orange so I can see it. And I throw this up in a tree over a branch. It's got a little carabiner on the other end. Clip here and pull it back. So you got to have a way to get this thing up high. So having a little roll of cord, you don't need paracord, it's not that heavy, something really thin and lightweight but strong that you can see, and some little fishy weights to get this thing up high. 
Super, super simple. So I can pack all of that here into this very, very, very simply. So with that battery and those two radios, I would be good for a couple of days. One of the other amazing advantages to having direct USB, to having direct USB charging is your ability to recharge on solar. So this is a great little 10 watt folding solar panel with a USB port on it. So how I would utilize this is I would use the solar panel to recharge the battery during the day. So that way you can put this kind of in the, uh, the battery in the shade and put this in the sun using the radios during the day while the battery is being charged during the day and then use the battery at night to recharge my radios. So if you want to go really, really, really inexpensively, the solar panel does come with these little carabiners. So you could just take these carabiners, clip it onto this little pouch and have a nice tight little package. Not indestructible, but cheap and pretty small. So let's take it up a notch. All of these items would very easily fit into this Apache case from Harbor Freight, including the solar panel, which fits in there very nicely. So, and have plenty of space over here to the side for my batteries and for the cables and all that stuff, including the solar panel. And now I've got something very, very, very durable. So the Redivis A1 is a great, very durable, uh, feature-rich, very simple radio that I think is sort of a standard. Really think that it should supplant anyone who is buying a Baofeng. Its capabilities are just amazing for the price. But let's take this one step further. So let's talk about more advanced capabilities. This is a VTEC NV76. So this is, uh, has a couple different brand names to it. And this is a radio that's designed for more digital operations. This has Bluetooth built into it. Well, what does that mean? That means I can associate my phone or my tablet with this radio and run digital modes. There are two primary digital modes, and then there's a third one that's, uh, that this is getting configured with. So we've got something, uh, a direct proprietary messaging through this that you use through their own app. And then there's a very old protocol called APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. So ham operators have been sending text messages and GPS tracking for decades using APRS. All the stuff you see about Mesh-tastic which I think is a huge scam personally, APRS does and does better because you can use higher powered radios, personal opinion. There's also another thing called WinLink, which I've talked about in other videos where you actually send emails. So your, your laptop or your tablet connects to your radio, you compose an email, your radio sends it out, hits a WinLink, station close-ish by, hopefully, that station converts it into an internet signal and then sends it out. Um, they're typically used on HF by transatlantic boaters, but there is a VHF version called WOAD, W-O-A-D, uh, and this was used by Jason Cam for ACK during the Nashville bombings a couple of years ago. So go check out his channel. So this radio that has Bluetooth in it is slowly gaining those additional capabilities. That Bluetooth firmware is in beta right now for WOAD, but it's getting better. APRS is pretty neat. It lets you send text messages and GPS coordinates via your radio. Now, why would you want to do that? The digital signal is, le is more sensitive than a voice signal, and so you might be on the edge of voice range, but your radio still may be able to pick up that data packet. 
and also you can set and forget instead of standing around on your radio calling saying hey is there anyone out there you can have your radio beaconing out on APRS and go and do other things and wait for people to kind of come back and respond to you I have an Android tablet I'm gonna pull out here in just a second that was sixty dollars that also runs on USB-C so I can recharge it with my little solar panel and download Google offline maps for my city or my state the tablet has GPS in it so I can pull up my location and then send it to other people completely with no internet access using offline maps so if I was in North Carolina or Florida or one of these other major disaster areas and I'm trying to let people know where I am and I have no power, no internet, I could use this tablet preloaded with offline maps, send my coordinates through my radio to someone else and say, here's where I am, come and help me. Let's take a look at this. So this is a $60 Android tablet that I bought out of my own money. And I bought this specifically because it's got a keyboard. I hate typing using the on-screen keyboard. So it's like a little laptop, but it runs on Android. And so I can use the Google Play Store just like anything else. So the most common app is called APRS Droid, although there are others. So this is made specifically for uh, Android devices. So I got my little $60 tablet here with a keyboard on it, and I can open up APRS Droid. And this shows traffic. And then I can pull up a map also. And this all works offline. I don't, you, you can upload a Google Maps file into this, so I don't have to have internet access for this to work. So if I send a message with my tablet, it will connect to the radio via Bluetooth and use this like a dial-up modem, like an old school dial-up modem, communicate to another radio and then have it decoded. If I was using WinLink, and I use WinLink here, <coughs> connect to my radio via Bluetooth, and then it sends it out to a WinLink station. So I've got some data capabilities. There are things called digipeters, which are digital repeaters, where the signal uh, hits a, an intermediary and bounced out, but it also works on simplex. So if I had two of these stations with you know two tablets and two radios, they can talk directly to each other. So I can send coordinates, text information, stuff like that, you know, over distance, uh, you know, without using voice that uh, I don't have to sit be sitting around and waiting for. So really, really, really neat capabilities. Might not be for everybody, but uh, this is a, a really neat setup that uh, expands what you can do. And just like with the rest of us, I can pack all that into this case. So I can take my two V20, V76s, drop them in here, take my tablet, put it on top, put my solar panel right here. I can put all my cables and various adapters in that roll-up antenna right here. And now I've got a Go kit that gives me voice and data capabilities with solar charging, with an external battery, with a higher antenna. So now I've got a whole bunch of capabilities all in one little case. I don't have a Raspberry Pi. People are buying Cyberdex. These are all off the shelf components that you don't have to do any programming or engineering to. It, you just have to associate them and off you go. And since the tablet charges on USB, I can use my solar panel and my battery on this. Well, I hope that gives you some ideas the number one biggest takeaway I want you to get from this video is that you got to practice with this stuff. I don't care about licenses. That's your own business, but you need to hook this stuff up and play with it. While I was making this video, I discovered that one of my USB cords didn't work, which is why my tablet wasn't charging. And I've been struggling with it for the last hour trying to figure out what was going on. So get all your stuff together and practice with it. Go out in the field, go out to a park, throw an antenna in the tree and see what happens. You got to get out there and play around with it. Get it all configured and set up before a hurricane hits. 
Some of these things you have to register, like vote, WOAD for a win link, APRS, it helps if you register ahead of time with APRS FI. So there, there's a little bit of a curve to it. So get out there and play around with this stuff before the next emergency. But none of this gear was really very expensive. The Redibus A1s are about 50 bucks. The tablet was $60. The solar panel was 30 bucks. Even the this V76 radios, these are about $180, which sounds like a lot, but you get a lot of functionality built into this. The fact that you've got a Bluetooth TNC in here takes the place of another device called a MobiLink, which is $150, and you've got USB charging. So that might sound expensive, but it's really not if you look at the capabilities that you're getting. This might not be for everyone. If you don't care about the data stuff, stick with the A1. It's a really, really simple radio with a lot of cool features. The uh, A1, as I've shown in other videos, will actually send GPS coordinates to each other. So if you have two of them, you can send your location and your distance to another radio. I think that that's the ultimate for a hiker or a backpacker or something like that that might get lost to be able to transmit where they are to somebody else. So. A lot of cool capabilities out there. You got to get out there and play with it first. Um, but I hope that uh, this video gave you some ideas of uh, you know what's out there. So uh, drop a comment comment down below. Let me know what you think. And thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.